about the Messi thing? Anything else on the Messi front, Chris, before we move on? No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm falling out. I told you, I never want to bring this guy's name up again. I don't know, man. This Messi thing is just a freaking mess. What a disaster. I don't want to hear this name ever again until it's official. But they got me back. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. Chris, the Herons are back. Welcome, everybody, to episode number 171 of the Battered Herons podcast. I am your host, Daniel Granada, and alongside me, as always, Mr. KBD. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. It's a beautiful Monday, but I hope that everybody in the chat has their torches ready. Are we going to walk Tata out of here? Are we walking him out of, out of South Florida already? Hell in a handbasket? You know Is that what's happening? I, I am excited to get onto the Tata thing because I think that although I'm not happy with Tata, and Taylor Swoman and I had a back and forth about that also. He still doesn't want to come on the show. But we had a back and forth about that on, on Twitter. Doing, Taylor, what are you doing? Um, I'm not happy with him, but I think that people got to reel it back a little bit, just a little bit, because I think people are overdoing it at the same time, but we'll get into that. Um, but first, Chris, did you by any chance have a time, a chance to cook up a apology letter to Mr. Diego Gomez? I look, I crafted it headers and footers and everything, but I don't have to get notarized. I need to get it notarized, so I do not have <laughs> okay. it. I will have it hopefully for Thursday. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll keep people waiting for that. All right. So uh, an hola to uh, Dranvin. I saw somebody from Australia earlier. Uh, shout out to everybody joining us in the chat. We appreciate you guys. And Chris didn't do his homework. Believe me, I've known him long enough that this is nothing new. So uh, Chris is never good with doing homework. Uh, all right, so before we start addressing things, not a lot going on right now. So we're going to talk about the season as a whole, MLS, Cup or Bust, Data. You can talk about Grussell if you guys want. We didn't get a chance to last time. But something that I keep seeing popping up in the chat already, I wanted to address real quick. Hold Di Maria. What, what's going on with this? I mean, I don't know. Are we just picking right? names out of a hat? I personally think there's absolutely no chance Di Maria comes. No way. I, I don't see, one, how they would afford him. No way. Uh, I, I see that, that uh, Money Matt is in the in the chat. Maybe Money Matt can, can fill us in. The whole <laughs> two buyouts per season, I don't think that that starts this year. Now, if it starts this year and they decide to buy somebody out, maybe. But I don't think that that starts until next season. So I don't see how they could possibly – oh, look at this guy. I don't see how they could possibly uh, get Di Maria, even if he wanted to come. And, I mean, I just don't see it. Now, one person that I do think is a possibility and selfishly I think would be absolutely wild because he's my favorite soccer player of all time is Sergio Ramos. I mean, I don't know if he would come, but that would make me really happy. But I could see that possibly happen. I know that I heard that he's considering coming to the MLS – and I mean, if he's coming here to retire and have a good time, I, I look, come on over. I, I think that he got along with Messi at PSG. He gets along with uh, Busquets and Alba because they played on the national team together. I could definitely see Sergio Ramos making a visit here in Miami when the summer comes around. Uh, I know you would love that. Oh, favorite Absolutely. player of all time. Uh, but like, isn't it ridiculous that we're having so many names thrown out there to come over here? Like, these guys aren't going to come for five bucks. Like, at some point, if we keep bringing on big names, okay, so Matthew's saying it's one buyout per transfer window, I believe, one in the winter, one in the summer. Guys, that's just not enough to be bringing in the big 11. Well, the thing is, before last season, before last season, it was one, and it had to be before the season started. And then yeah. they changed it last year, and they did it for Messi. I'm sorry. That's why they did it. They did it for Messi. They did it. You could do it throughout the season, and they used it on Pizarro once they knew the big three were coming. Yes. And now they changed it again to two buyouts. But because they announced it once the season has started, I believe that that won't go into effect until next season. Now, have they used one already? I don't think they have. Did they use it on, uh, on Stefanelli? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm off. I should have looked this up. I, I didn't think that this is where this conversation well, was going to go. I wasn't expecting this conversation to go this way. So Facundo Farias, they they 
basically no, got rid of him in order to, no no he's ir yeah, he's, I, he's ir yeah but we we basically had to shelve him to bring on redondo right mm -hmm. and i mean other than that stefanelli i think he ended up getting i don't know if it was loaned to uh no, money master that we used it for coco john oh yeah. yeah that guy's i don't even know if that guy's playing soccer at this point yeah, I think he's I, playing for another team. Yeah, a lot like of people are confirming. Or something. Everybody's saying Coco, Coco. Okay, so they used it already for Coco. So I, I, we don't have any more buyouts. So Sergio Ramos, if he comes on the discount, I could see him coming. I don't see Angel Di Maria coming on a discount. Um, he still has, you know, we'll, like, time to play, like, legitimate soccer. He's older also, man. I think he might be, he might be Messi's age. I mean, it, if FIFA 24 is still coming out with banger cards for him. Are you kidding me? You think Di that Maria, he's good? He's 36. Di Maria is 36. That's uh, not, 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 not bad. Not bad. See? Sergio Ramos is 38. So, I, I look, I could definitely see Sergio Ramos coming and just wanted to. He's a defender, like, though. Yeah, I know. But, yeah. And one that's very I mean, look at Christoph. Team. Christoph is like 45. No, he's not. He's actually like 31. I mean, he, just he looks, looks like that. he's 57. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, and again, I don't want to get too much in the Sergio Ramos talk because I don't want to get myself excited, but I, I would be pretty hyped if he comes, but we'll, we'll see. All right. Um, so, no, I, I don't I don't think that Di Maria will ever come here. Um, but, you know, I, I keep saying that popping up. I don't know if there was news somewhere on the Twitterverse that I didn't see today, but randomly I saw that popping up on the chat as soon as we got on here, so I figured we should address it. So are we just going to start naming Argentines here, guys? Now, Is Dybala that what we're sure. doing here? I mean, come on. Dybala coming over here, bro? Like, what? Come on, mm. timing in. No. All right. So uh, as you guys saw when you clicked on the, on the episode, it said MLS Cup or bust. So I feel like this is an important conversation to have. Yes. Now, we have an opportunity to get two trophies this season. We have the Leagues Cup. We have MLS Cup. And then I don't count Supporter Shield. I don't even think the MLS considers it a trophy. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. But I don't think that they consider it an official trophy. So it's MLS Cup and Leagues Cup. Now, I come to you, Chris, and I want to know what you think. If they do not win the MLS Cup, is this season an absolute bust? You know, I think that's a great question. I want to see what the chat thinks. If you guys could just chime in, yes or no. MLS Cup or bust, yes or no. And everybody so far is saying yes. Now, the issue is, is that here, we were kind of like all in for the CONCACAF. Now yes. that that's out of the way... And like you said last episode, now we're like balls deep into the season in every single way, shape, or form. So I agree with every single person in this chat because there's not one no I've seen. It has to be MLS Cup or bust. This is the closest I've seen to not. Somebody said probably. That's the probably. closest I've seen to, to – uh, no, look. And Florida Man hit us with three languages. He said it in English, Spanish, and French. Nice. There we go. And I believe they spell we with an I, though. I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, okay, Chris. So do you agree? Yes. No, absolutely. I agree. And then Alex Rivas is saying, win League's Cup, deep run, semifinal, in league or MLS Cup, whatever, on leagues. So he's basically hoping we get the MLS Cup over League's Cup. Well, but I think then leagues, is. League's Cup would actually put us back into the CONCACAF running next year. No? So what MLS Cup? That's why Columbus is in it oh, this year. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes, it would. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so you get in it regardless. Balls deep, Matthew. Come on, Money Matt. <laughs> We're balls deep in this, baby. All right. Well, I agree with everybody. I think that MLS Cup or bust. And I just want to show a graphic real quick. Now, before the season started, on the battered hair runs here, we, we made our own little uh, graphic with all the games that we would be playing this season if we played in the U.S. Open Cup, if we played in uh, the CONCACAF Champions Cup, went to the final in all of them, like, and it was a very congested schedule. And this is the graphic that we made. Now you can see there's a lot of stuff going on there, right? 
<laughs> now, here we are, two months into the season. We no longer have CONCACAF Champions Cup. U.S. Open Cup never became a thing. And look at how different this looks once you eliminate all that stuff. Man. Once you see the difference between this and that, and then obviously Luis Suarez and Kremaki up top, but outside of that, when you see the difference, that's a big Balls like, deep. As you said, balls deep. Balls like, deep. You no longer have that, that uh, schedule congestion. There aren't many Wednesday games anymore where you need to rotate your schedule, rotate your roster. Like this needs to be MLS Cup or bust. Like you yeah. can go in on just about every game. Now, when people are saying that we should win Supporter Shield, that's a different story. Although I would love it simply because I would love to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Not because I want the Supporter Shield. I don't really care about that. I want, I want to go to a playoff field. game. Right, I want to go to all the playoff games. That, that's what I want. But there's, a, there's an issue here. We got <laughs> – there's an issue here. Uh, why is the Inter Miami logo replaced with the Batter Herons logo? Uh, because that's because, just how we do it. Balls deep. Like, what do we – I, I wanted to make sure that it showed that we did it. I don't know. Come on. I don't know. I, th- I thought it looked kind of nice. Anyway. Of course it does. So the issue is right here – when you get to that second line where it says June 15th, Philadelphia Union, where we are on the road from June 15th all the way to about July 20th against the Chicago Fire, there's a good chance that we're missing several players, most notably one Lionel Messi. Mm-hmm. And if you count how many games now, it depends on how deep they go in the tournament, but let's say that they go all the way to the final. You're missing one, two, three, four, five, six, possibly seven games. I don't know if you're back for the July 20th or not. Possibly seven games without Messi and who knows who else. I don't know if the supporter shield is going to be an option for us if Messi's missing seven games. We have seen how we fared without Messi. Messi is obviously what makes this team run. So... No, and we're not gonna have Redondo, right? By then, um, I maybe we might miss him for the League's Cup because he's gonna be playing in the Olympics. Yeah, maybe, but it's like you said, we uh, we've seen how this team looks without him. I think we've only had like two successful games without him. The uh, rest have been a disaster. Yeah, and then somebody. I think asked, we tied one, and then we won one without him. With, who are you talking about? I'm talking about without Messi. Uh, we haven't lost with him. Yeah. No, without him, I'm saying. Right. So without him, we've yeah. lost twice. Yeah, we've lost. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, we've only had, I think, one or two good example games without him. The rest have been shambles. Yeah, it was the D.C. United game. Yeah. That was it. Other than that, it's been, it hasn't been great. And then, oh, This is a great question for you, Danny. Yeah. Why don't people care about the Shield? People don't care about the shield because what you care about is being the champion at the end of the season. And even though in other places in the world, whoever ends up with the most points is the champion, here the champion is whoever's left standing at the end of the playoffs. So the supporter shield isn't really that big a deal. Um, and Matias Rojas is shown on the Inter Miami roster now on the MLS website. Well, that's interesting. I'm going to check that out. Um, but that's why Nick- people don't really care about the – about uh, the supporter shield all that much. Nick, Nick is here dropping bombs. Skrilla is saying Matias Rojas on the rest, on the roster. Check on the MLS site. There's literally breaking news as we are speaking, Danny. Literally. I don't know Lit- what MLS site they're looking at. I'm looking at it. I don't see them anywhere. So uh, where are you finding this information, Nick? Are you on, like, MLS.org? Maybe it's because I'm Alejandro on the- wants the Alejandro wants the supporter shield, and everybody just doesn't like the Plato, the Plato plate, the, the, the Plato trophy. Yeah. It just doesn't matter as much. It, I mean, does it really matter as much? It's no way. So what, you have, like, the best record? That's it? Yep. You didn't win a chip. 
So you're like the best of the participants. But that's about it. Uh, hold on. Nick is saying, I'm spamming the link. Uh, there's no spamming. Don't spam it. And Sounds is saying it's lies. Look, I'm, I'm on the... I'm on the on the site. There's no Rojas here, so no Rojas on the on the Inter Miami website. And I checked on MLS Soccer. I don't see him there either. Nick, uh, you're playing too much, bro. You're playing too much. All right, so let's move on. Um, I think that MLS Cup or bust. It, let's say hypothetically, I'm going to throw this hypothetical out at you. Let's say we win the League's Cup. We win the yeah. Supporter Shield also. Mm. Leagues Cup and Supporter Shield, mm -hmm. and you make a deep run in the playoffs. You make it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. Is it a successful season or is it not? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think so. so. We got knocked out too early on the CONCACAF. Like, if, maybe if we were to progress more in the CONCACAF. But that's a trophy, though. That's a trophy and Supporter Shield. But it's not the it's not the trophy, and it doesn't put us on the biggest on the biggest map of 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 all the competitions. Leagues Cup does. Leagues Cup does, but then we're kind of back in the same cycle again. We're not progressing. Look, Alejandro said yes, two trophies. I I don't consider the Supporter Shield a trophy. I I don't either. I want that star, baby. Yeah, and Marasovic so, is saying it. We need MLS. I so in the chat, if you could just write what makes this does it have to be Leagues Cup and MLS Cup? Can it just be MLS uh, Leagues Cup? Does it have to be MLS Cup? If it's MLS Cup and nothing else, are you happy? If you sneak into the playoffs as the eighth seed, that means you had a, not that great of a season, a lot of no. turmoil. You don't win the Leagues Cup, but you somehow make a run and win the MLS Cup anyway. Is that a successful season? A lot of people well, are just I mean, putting MLS Cup, and that's it. That's all it takes. Well, I mean, because like I said, we got knocked out too early in this CONCACAF tournament. Like, now it's it's all hands on deck. It's prepare for the MLS Cup. It's it's both or bust, according to Mitch. It's both and, or bust. Uh, both and then look, Sounds, Sounds is saying if at least MLS Cup, we're happy. You know why I'm okay with people saying both? Because you do not have to um, change things up to go ahead and prioritize one over the other. Because there's a full month break from the regular season for League's Cup. Now, you might say that the players get worn out a little bit in that one-month yeah. run because they're playing like every three – like, I don't know if you remember last year's League's Cup. It felt like every three days we had a game. Yes, and, it was awful. And, and, and it felt like the players got a little worn out. So I guess in that aspect, it, it's not that great. But just Google his name. So Matias Rojas. I mean, let's 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 get some sol solidarity behind this, Mister Krabs. I need screenshots. I need some on Twitter. You need the screenshots. Some well, you could people can dock up screenshots. I'm just gonna go on on uh, the MLS. I'm gonna go on on I, Wikipedia. I see, I see. Look, I got it, and I, I'm, I'm gonna put it on screen in a second. Give me a second while I do this. Nick so just I, says I, he I, I po found, he posted it up I on found. Discord. I found it. I found it. I'll, I'll Hammy, let everybody, I'll Hammy let everybody says, see Hammy says, go on Discord. Uh, so a I couple people, it. if you if you guys aren't on our Discord, guys, jump on the Discord. The batter fam is always hanging out there. We're going crazy out there. We're throwing parties. We're popping bottles. We're doing all kinds of stuff. All right. So, all right. So I think we're all clear. It's MLS or oh bust. God. And even if it's a League's Cup championship, it doesn't matter. If there's no League um, MLS Cup attached to it, nobody's happy. So if the summer comes around and it's the end of August and we are celebrating a League's Cup title, people are still not satisfied because it is officially MLS Cup or bust. And I'm okay with that, actually. So right. you, you'd, how, about, how about if I was to tell you Capacito Cup and that's it? No, you need the MLS Cup. All right, let me put so up what, what everybody's so talking about. So you can't equal last year's success. Nah, a we full year equal. of Messi, Luis Suarez, 
Busquets, Alba, Redondo, Gomez, like a full year of these no, guys? No, you can't. I'm, I, I, I also agree. And Marisiahu, yeah, yeah. thank that's you for why. the shout out. And this right here is what everybody's talking about. Look at that. He's like a creator player character. That is what this everybody's guy. talking about here is Matias Rojas is showing up technically on the MLS website as a player, um, but you have to search it through Google. That's the only way it pops out because if you go through the MLS website, it will not show up. doesn't have a picture. doesn't have anything under his profile. So uh, maybe the MLS – was trying to get somebody to get ahead of the game, get them in there, and they didn't think that anybody from the batter family was going to find out, but they underestimate the chat. Yeah, I mean, you guys, the batter fam, you guys are off the chain. Give credit to whoever was at funded first. Somebody somebody said it. Shout out to you. It was, it was, uh, it was, I'll tell you who it was. Was it Mitch? No, it wasn't Mitch. It was Nick. Nick is the one that dropped it. Shout out to Nick. Shout Good out to Nick. I mean, Nick, we need we need you. We need you. That's Nick Tracy like you. right there. Nick yes. Tracy. Nick Tracy, baby. Hey. There we I go. I wonder if anybody's going to get that. <laughs> all right. So go ahead and um, all right. So so we got MLS Cup robust. MLS Cup has is necessary. All right. So now the other thing I wanted to touch on today, Tata. Everybody is on the Tata out movement. And I kind of get it. Kind of. Right? Because obviously we're very frustrated when he runs three, a three-man back line. It's frustrating. Yeah. I get it. I get it. In the regular season, we've played nine games. We've lost only twice. Inspector Gadget. Yeah. There you go. The Banana Coat Detective. There you go. We got we got some we got some old heads in here that get it. So nine games he's lost twice. We went ahead and we won, although it sucks because we still got eliminated. We eliminated Nashville in the Champions Cup, and then we lost to a superior Monterrey team. What's they're ranked number one in the North in North American Coca Cola. And on top of that, we were all giving him credit. Even the Tata haters were giving him credit for what that team did the first leg against Monterrey because we should have won that game if it wasn't for that red card. Yeah. The way he kind of he kind of compressed that midfield and forced everybody wide, we're like, that was genius. It worked. They couldn't get the ball to Canales. They couldn't get the ball to Brandon Vasquez. Everybody was giving Tata credit that game for what should have been a win. I, I, I understand the frustration with Tata. I do. I understand it. But I think it's way too early to say Tata out. What do you think, Chris? And I would love to hear what I, I see a lot of people already opinionating there in the, in the chat. Well, it, 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 let's just make a simple chat. All right, Tata, in or out? Just make it simple. I, I, I don't think it's that simple, but okay. No, no, no. But I, I just want a quick, quick answer from everybody in the chat. In or out? Or, you know, not available. I don't know. But this is a perfect comment right here. Uh, I don't like Tata right now, but who can replace him, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is, guys, we've had our most successful season as of yet, and obviously, it's a big, it's a the big reason is because of the players we have on this team. I, I mean, no way, Ch Xavi Alonso is coming. Xavi Alonso just broke Bayern Munich's like a million year streak. As a, a winning the, the title over there in Bundesliga, he is going, he might go somewhere, but it's definitely not to the MLS. And there's a lot more people saying out than I had thought. Uh, and 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 look at this. I mean, Matthew Money Matt is saying Tata foot in the door or maybe out the door. Mm, Shout out to that, to that, to that super slam, the battered blast. Tata won Supercopa with Messi in Barcelona. I don't know, man. I mean, the thing is, the, the instant thing would be, I want Tata out, right? Because you got all these players, Tata. You need to do something with it, right? I mean, the players that are around him defensively are trash. But you got some other players that are, like, pretty good. Uh, just, just to take a second away from this Tata talk, uh, Ed brought up an interesting point that I hadn't considered. League's Cup is probably more difficult to win just because the 
the Liga MX teams are in there. Yeah. So would you still value the MLS Cup over the the League's Cup? I mean, both tournaments get us the both winnings get us in the Concacaf, right? Only one gets a little star up top of the shield, though. That's that's the difference. But you're beating lesser. You're beating lesser competition to get. But that we already star. won that. But we already won that coffee. Exactly. Trophy. We won the Cafecito Trophy, the Cafecito Cup. So, I mean, look. It's like you said. If we were to get MLS Cup and that's it, people would be more happy. But if we repeat on the League's Cup, it's like you said. It's going to be the same thing as last year. If we win League's Cup and MLS Cup, then you just saved grace. All right, you you oh, salvage this deal. I, I, I'm absolutely. happy. I'm happy. Yes, MLS absolutely. Cup, I'm still happy, but it's like, man, we, yeah. we should have done more. Uh, so I say to see Jonathan in. Oh, shoot. I, I'm sorry. All good. Jonathan said in. Uh, let's see. Who else? I, I can't click on him for whatever reason, Chris. I don't know. Oh, there I you mean, go. Marasovic in. Tony Axe, too soon. Uh, Mitch, Tata is good when he takes his medicine. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got Rome. You'll cry. You'll cry. You can cry all you want, but Tata is untouchable. I don't know if he's untouchable. I don't but know about now, untouchable, Bobby. Maybe not in the next couple of weeks he's untouchable, but once the summer comes around, anything goes. Uh, Alexi out. Leonel in. Tamian out. Esteban in. Matthew, Tata's foot in the door. Uh, Tata and Henderson out. Ooh, okay. David out. Lawrence out. Nick in for now. Okay, so we got, we got, we got. We, we got, got a, a, a nice a mix. Yeah, we yeah, got a we mix. Got... Oh, okay. And then we got random Alejandro saying Zinedine, uh, Zinare, please. Zinedine Zidane? No, that's not happening. Uh, Mourinho? Uh, okay. So <laughs> Lamar definitely wants Mourinho, but I don't think Mourinho, the way he clashes with his players, I don't see that working out with uh, the players we got. Messi's not going to want to deal with Mourinho. That's not happening. Tata out. Yeah, I mean, Esteban Dito is singing the Tata out praises. But the thing is, again, we've had our most successful season, and it could be mostly because of the players we have. Do I think that another coach would coach this team better than Tata? I mean, I don't know. I don't know whether that's the case or not. But I think we got to give him. How long do you think that the leash is for Tata? Like, you think uh, it's full season? Full season? I mean, all right. So, let's say that he duplicates what he's done so far through nine games. That would put you at, what, eight wins, six draws, and four losses. 18 games in, four losses. I think that's pretty good. That is no? pretty good. I mean, you're still and probably is, top of the table. Yeah. I mean, Esteban Mejia is mentioning top of the table. We're a game ahead. We got a game yeah. in hand. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, with a grain of salt, we do have a game in hand. But... I, I think you have to give him a season. Look, us on this show, we're one of the few people, or one of the few shows that we're defending Neville. And I, I was defending him right along with Chris up until the point he had that second six game losing streak. At that point, I was like, all right, you got to go, buddy. Because even if it wasn't his fault, which I didn't think it was fully his fault, I mean, look at the players he had. I mean, come on. Even, come on, even come then, on. but still, you can't, you can't have that many two losing streaks of six games or you more and keep your job. And something needs to change. So at Don't that point, that garbage. I, 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 I got mean, look at the training oh. staff that he had. Mad people got injured, just like how they're getting injured now. But Except even now, then, Tata has a Messi, has a Busi, has a a, a, a Jordi, has a Luisi. Then, he got two and a half years. Tata's been around for like eight months. Listen, and in those eight months, he has a trophy. I get it. He had Messi, whatever. But like that's why I'm saying it's too quick. I'm okay not being happy with him. But it's too quick to pull the trigger. You're gonna pull the trigger for losing two games and losing the you, Cup. I get it. You want to know? You want to know who Phil Neville had to replace players with? He had kids out of the academy, guys straight out of the box with diapers on. You know who Tata has replacing people? Huh? He has Diego Gomez. He has Redondo. He has Luis Suarez. He has Messi. He has Alba. He, I mean, come on. Come on. I get it. But how uh, many six-game losing streaks has Tata had? Because he has Messi. Uh, okay. Okay. But my point if is. If Messi then plays why one game him? every – if Messi has one game every three – if he plays one game every three games, 
he'll never go through a six game losing streak. How about that? Okay. Phil Neville, you know who twice, his messy though. was? His messy was Pozuelo, and he Pozuelo. left after like five minutes. Okay. My point is then why do you fire him if he's not losing games? I get he lost to Monterrey. We understand. But in the regular season, why, why do you fire him then? Yeah, I mean, fucking Phil Neville had Uyoa. Um, somebody's asking, how long will, more, will Messi be at Miami? Well, he's supposed to be here for this year and next year. I have a feeling he's going he's gonna to stick around for 2026 also. But for sure this year and next year. Uh, I have a feeling that he's gonna he's gonna take that option and finish out twenty twenty six though. Mr. Krabs, Neville's Messi was not Iguain. No, I'll say it's Neville's Campana. Messi Neville's Messi was Posuelo. Posuelo, when he came on this team, literally you saw an uptick in every single form and fashion of this team. Like people mm-hmm. were literally crying because Posuelo was not re signed. It wasn't it until shortly Oh, of course, because we got Messi. So we got like an infinity and beyond version of Pozuelo. But right. I'll tell you this much. I flirt with the Facebook uh, page, and, and there's just people that are just insupportable on that page. But there's people that still want Pozuelo back. That would be pretty funny. I, w- I, I mean, I would love Pozuelo if he could come for like five bucks and play with or behind Messi. Tell me that wouldn't be phenomenal. I mean, imagine Pozuelo filling in on games that Messi's out. Uh, so Judas said that out for who? I mean, it's easy to say you want him out, but who's going to come replace him? Like, are you going to have Javi Morales coach Messi for like a month until they find a new a new coach? Yeah, I I, I don't know. I I think it's too early. That's my thing. I think it's too I mean, early. Morales was the fucking babysitter. It was, but we knew that. Like, you knew that he was going to keep the job for the whole year, especially if we got these big names. Yeah. All right. So, and his son is a baller. That's what I've heard. I've heard his he used to be a baller, a also. Baller. He used to be a baller, also. Um, so, all in all, I think it's too early to give Tata the boot. I think it's too early for the Tata out hashtags. Because I, I know that it's quick, right? Like, oh, F this guy. Let's get him out. But, like, why? Like, I understand. They lost to Monterrey. There's, I mean, but Monterrey was going to be a hard team to beat anyway. But he's still doing well. And you can give all the credit to Messi. But, I mean, he's still a coach. So, when the next coach comes in, it's, you can give all the credit to Messi also. Like, it's obvious that he's going to get all the credit. But, I mean, I, I don't see why Tata's getting all this hate. That's just me. I just want to mention something to Moon, man. He's saying Phil Neville suck big time and has no vision. You can judge Tata when the team is full and healthy. Moon, man. He has fucking messy. You want to know who Phil Neville had? A fucking middle school team. He what are we that doing? middle school team to the playoffs. Who did? Okay, but my... But, Neville. But my point is exactly that that can still take the team to the playoffs. He can still win the MLS Cup. He can still win the Leagues Cup. Hell, he can still win the Supporter Shield. All of these things are still possible. So why are we thought that out? All of these things are still a possibility. I'm not thought that out because he's, again, led us to our most successful season up to date. And I'm happy with him. In terms of how he is adjusting this team, little by little, you're starting to see that he's playing the four in the back and he's not putting people out of position. Uh, I don't know what the hell is going on with the training staff, but that that needs to be evaluated immediately. But I'm not out on that yet. I think what got people up in arms was that that three in the back against Monterrey. That's what what got people pissed off. With Noah Allen starting? Yeah. So I, I, I guess I understand that. But, I mean, without Redondo in that game, like you just – it was just tough all overall. But, again, I'm not that out just quite yet. I'm still I'm still hanging on with him. And on top of that, we also have to oh, understand that. that. Yeah, that's true also. Oh, he said – And, and no, subs. no subs. I mean, he had, he had fucking two, two goalies as substitutes. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, what are we doing with that? And then I mean, injured people on the subs. Yeah, no, I, I can't defend that no subs. I couldn't understand why he would have no subs. But, I mean, I guess you use the best players you have when, you, when you're when you trying to catch up somehow. Because taking out one of your starting 11 for one of the, the banged up players on the bench, uh, I don't know if that would have helped at all. Look at this. Claude is saying this year I don't think Inter will win a trophy. Woof. How bad? How bad would the backlash be if that happens? Oh At that my. point, I think Gattao for sure. Like I, he doesn't survive that. No, they, there's no way he should be allowed to survive that. Absolutely not. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then I don't know if you wanted to touch up on on Gressel since we were supposed to touch up on him on Saturday and then we didn't. So, how do you feel about Gressel because he's a constant starter? And I think he's. I think he's just a product of Tata's love and Tata's experience with him. I think that because he's had experience with him and that he feels like he can float him around, I think that, unfortunately, he's at a point will, where, you know, he's, I don't want to say untouchable, but, I mean, he's getting a lot of playing time, and he's not really consistent. No, I agree. I'm, I'm not a big Gressel fan. And um, I was a lot harder on him in the preseason. I, I, I've now seen him be able to string a couple passes together, and but I, I'm not a big Russell fan. Now, if we have a fully healthy starting eleven, I think Russell, as much as Tata loves him, will will be um, left out. Yeah, because if he's playing the four three three, you know who the four in the back are. In the midfield, he's going to have Busquets, but he's going to have Gomez and Redondo. Yeah. Well, it's like like what I asked you last episode. When Redondo comes back, who's the odd man out? The first name you mentioned without hesitation Gressel. was Gressel. It has to be. Because Redondo and, and Gomez are going to start. Now, you know when Gressel's going to play a lot? And I hope you're ready. In the summertime, he's going to be like our go-to guy. Like, we're going to be building our offense through him. Because oh my God, that's for awesome. the League's Cup, we're not going to have Diego Gomez or Redondo because they're going to be in the Olympics. For Copa America, we're not going to have Messi. Um, I don't know if Diego Gomez will play for that also. I think he's supposed to just pick one of the two. So, I mean, Russell is going to be playing heavy minutes during the summertime. So I hope you're ready for that because the, the offense goes through him. It's going to be awful. It's going to yeah. be awful. All right. Well, uh, I, I think that's it for today. Unless anybody in the chat wants to to discuss anything else, I think we, we just wanted to talk about MLS Cup or bust, Data, and then touch up on Gressel. Wasn't too much to say about Gressel. I think there's nobody defends him anymore. I don't think that's happening. Um, this have, th this is a good question. When is Taylor coming back? I would love to know because Taylor balls, and he's not question. one to like shy from from coming back from an injury. So. Well, it sounds like Matias Rojas is going to be around with us soon. I mean, this guy. I mean, what are we gonna? What are we doing? How, I wonder how much money we're going to pay that guy. You think we're going to pay that guy big money, Matias uh, Rojas? And he's a guy that's been swimming in the in in the Inter Miami sweepstakes for like a month or so. Well, can I tell you that there's a chance that we just never see Taylor again? I'm done with you. Is that a there's good a that's chance? A good, there's a good that's a good tease that you're doing for the next episode. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think there's a there's, there's a slight chance. There's a slight chance that we don't see Taylor again, especially if there's a fucking Rojas. riot. I will fucking riot. If everybody Matias meet Rojas me outside. Is, everybody meet know. me out everybody meet me outside of uh entrance one. And then we're going to go into section 124. We're going to riot. No, we're going to go to one of the Lego stands. And we're going to fucking tear that shit okay, down. Now, now, now let, me, let me clarify. I am not a reporter. This is nothing that I've heard. Okay. I'm just randomly putting it out there. He got injured. We haven't heard from him again. I haven't heard absolutely anything. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing this Matia Rojas news, which, by the way, he is a forward. I believe he played uh, as a center attacking midfield. But I'm assuming that he might be versatile. Maybe they'll move him around. 
So look, he plays as a right wing. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we never see Taylor again, which would really suck. But so far, I got a lot of people ready to riot, Danny. So let's go to the fucking Lego stands in All the right, south I'll... east corner. Southeast corner, we're gonna tear that shit down. <laughs> tear it down. I'll I'll end it with here and then I'll let you give your final words. Taylor for a life. Yes. I think Robert Taylor, at this very moment, right? I know Messi will be it, and, and by the end of the year, it'll be Messi. But up until now, Robert Taylor is the best. The word isn't best. Maybe it is. I don't know how. I, I, he is the – I don't even know how to phrase it because I, I don't want to phrase it incorrectly. But he is gonna... the number one Inter-Miami player of all time. Ooh. Up until this moment, right? I know by the end of the season, it'll be messy. But up until this moment, I think Robert Taylor is Inter Miami's greatest player of all time. I think that, that he, would, he would be number one. He's played here, what, three seasons. He's up there in goals, up there in assists. I think he is the number one player in Inter Miami history. Short history, right? We've only been around for four or five years. So, uh, what do you think? I agree. I'm gonna let you get away with not mentioning Emerson in that category, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Some I'm people gonna... might say Iguain. Yeah, it's. I mean, Tank is mentioning Taylor, Iguain, and Morgan. Yeah, a lot of people are saying Messi already, and yeah, I get it, right? Because he already won the first trophy. But I'm trying to have a fun conversation. But yeah, it's, it probably is Messi already because he came and right away won the won the trophy. But outside of Messi, I think Robert Taylor would be number one, right? It'd be Robert Taylor or Drake, right? Those would be the top two. Yes. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm changing my riot location. Guys, changing riot location. We are going to the southwest corner because we're going to take down that stupid little VIP Lego section. We're doing it for this guy right here, baby. Let's go. We're taking down that VIP stupid section in the corner, that Lego section. Well, I look, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm starting to get a sick little feeling that Robert Taylor, I mean, he he doesn't make that much money, though, with the team. So maybe maybe I'm wrong. But, you know, it's weird how Inter Miami just randomly is like, we'd like to thank Robert Taylor in one of those, like, social media posts. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. All right, Chris, any final words? It's already bad enough you're speaking it into existence. Let's close out the show already. If you are listening on audio, we appreciate you listening all the way to the end. Please leave us five stars, comment, review, all that other good stuff. If you are watching on YouTube, thank you for watching all the way to the end. Please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. And as always, for those of you that joined us in the chat, we appreciate you. If you're still hanging around with us, all 188, 200 of you, we're going to be at 10 o'clock, Batter Herons en Español. If you haven't already, go ahead, type in Batter Herons en Español, subscribe to the channel, Meet us at 10 o'clock, and we'll be doing it all over again. We will be with uh, Sebas Crackball, Xavier Lavos, Danny Solana, and we'll be talking Monterrey, and we will be talking um, – who was it that we just beat? I, oh, KC. That's right. Sporting yeah, KC, KC in Arrowhead. KC. So we'll be on there at 10 o'clock. So if you got nothing to do, go ahead and join us in about 15 minutes. So appreciate you guys. We will be back. Actually, I don't know if we're going to be back on Wednesday. We don't have too much to talk about because – there's no middle of the week game this week. So yeah. we will go ahead and we'll keep you guys up to date. But for sure, we're going to have Mr. Uncle Mad with us so we can preview our game against Nashville on Saturday. Uh, so just hang with us uh, on X, Twitter, whatever you call it, and we'll let you know for sure when our next episode will be. So either Wednesday or Thursday, regardless. We appreciate you guys. And until the next one, have a good one. <laughs>